Hello, 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 guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And in this episode, we are looking at top tips for Canva. Now, obviously, I'm all right at Canva, but it's not good to have, you know, to, I really need the, the the king of Canva to come on and talk about <laughs> this, him. which is um, the wonderful Chris Target from Social for Brokers. You've heard me talk about this guy on the podcast before. He's been on the show before. He's a good friend, and I highly respect what he does in the industry. So let's bring Chris on to talk all about you're listening to the mortgage marketing podcast with ash borland the show that helps mortgage brokers create impact and income by mastering content marketing let's, let's dive, dive straight, straight into, into it. it hello 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 chris welcome to the show mate Thanks very much. The king of Canva. That is what That's I'm you. talking about. I should have changed my name on the bottom of this. Chris, king of Canva, <laughs> social remote. And also, how class was the uh, that intro? I've never seen that on StreamYard before. That is awesome. Did you not? Oh, no, yeah. I've got – so on that, like people do this, and I actually – so I have a um, about six or seven little ads that run on that as well. So I've got this guy that I work with in the US, and so we've got like advert for the coaching, advert for the blueprint, advert for – follow me on facebook advert for like like literally loads and um yeah it's cool and i make all the videos in canva funnily enough um and then uh and, and a bit of something else as well but yeah no it's good i'm we'll have to get one for your show i'll tell you what you do get yourself one made and i'll make you the video <laughs> yes yeah yeah i need to actually do that i was thinking i'm thinking oh how can we uh how can we jazz ours up absolutely but no, i'll stuff, make you a video just stuff. let me know Thank drop you. me a whatsapp and i'll make you a video i love it <laughs> awesome anyway. right so we're going to be talking about canva today i'm excited Yes, let's talk about it. So this is your top tips for Canva. So let's just dive in. You're the guy. Talk about this. What what would you like to share with the audience on this one? Right. So let me give you a bit of a background and as to why I'm giving out these tips. Mm -hmm. I spend probably a, between 20 and 30 hours a week on Canva. So <laughs> we will create probably 180 posts per week, social media posts. So I'm in Canva all the time spend so much time in it, headphones on, music on, and there's so many things that I've found, but there's a lot of stuff I'm still to learn. So what I thought is come on and share my five top tips with Canva. And these are going to be a bit different to the normal tips that I share. So you'll you'll hear me talk about social media posts all the time. I'm going to share a few different things that you can do on Canva as well. Okay. So the first thing, which I don't really talk to many people about, is Canva is not just for social media posts. Okay. Yes, it's great. You can choose to make a size of post as an Instagram post, a Facebook post, even a Pinterest post if you wanted to. But what you can also do is create flyers on there. So I know I saw you speaking on a social post the other day about that print isn't dead. Print is yes. still out there. Sponsor your local rugby rugby football club, your football club, your, your local supermarket, make a banner. They can all be made within Canva. I've seen What's you cool? doing things on Canva just on that. I've seen you doing things like the T-shirts and all these really cool things. Like I use your what you do on Canva as like, I don't know how he does it, but this looks really cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can do so much cool stuff. Um, and that yeah, actually so was inspired by you. That that post was inspired by seeing you do do stuff with T-shirts. And I thought I'll do one. And then I couldn't work out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, I'm going to be doing a series of videos on these, but on the, what you do is you save a design. And then on the left-hand side, if you press um, smart mock-ups and you can put your design on a T-shirt, a mug, a computer screen, I think like a banner, loads of different stuff like that. That's what they call smart mock-ups. But we, we were talking about print and what you can do in Canva is create a flyer. And if you're sending it off to a printer, what they will need, they will need it in what they call CMYK, okay. which is like a specific color profile. And you can now save your designs as CMYK in Canva, which is a huge leap forward. Wow. So you can create flyers in there. You can create posters, magazine adverts, um, presentations, anything like that. You can even create website pages in there. So don't think Canva is just for social media posts. Okay. Yeah. Second tip, this is one I'm always big on and I'll always mention this on podcast, is use your consistent colors and fonts across your social media posts. So what I recommend is the first three months go really hard on your particular colors. Okay, these are colors that you're going to be recognized for in your local area. 
So if you are a red, make sure that red features in your posts, because what will happen, the first thing that you'll have is friends and family will start saying, oh, I'm seeing you everywhere. It's almost a bit of a dig, but that's great <laughs> because they know that your brand is out there. I always call it the Sainsbury's carrier bag analogy. If you see somebody walking down the street with an orange carrier bag, you don't even have to look at the logo. You automatically know that it's a Sainsbury's carrier bag. That's the strength you want to get your brand in your local area. And I know as mortgage brokers, you want to hit the whole nation. You want to hit the whole of the UK for business, but you're much more likely to hit a smaller audience of your local people than try and hit everybody in the UK. That's powerful. Okay. That's really powerful. And it's true with the Sainsbury one, because there isn't really a bag out there that's as recognizable. Really. Exactly. If, if you look, I was speaking to um, Nicola from DM Mortgages actually about this. We talk about the Coca-Cola truck that... At Christmas, they release a video every year of the Coca-Cola truck that's bright yeah. red. Now, that's not anything saying, come and buy from us, come and buy Coke, buy Coke over Pepsi. It is literally a van, a, a, a lorry driving down the road. Yeah, That's what your social media post should be there. You should be reminding people of your branding and of what you do, not always call to action. I love okay? that. Number three, this is one I never really talk about, but I thought I'm going to write this one in for today is when you get your logo created, always try and get two different colorways. So always get a dark version and always get a light version. And the reason I say that is it saves you having to put your logo on a white box or on a black box in a design. And it almost looks like you've just taken an image off Google and plonked your logo on there. What you can do if you've got your light and your dark, and you can use your lighter one on darker images, and you can use your darker one on lighter images. I've got the two there in the corner because that's what there I have to do. I was just putting <laughs> so, them on. I was so you only have it. them on. I haven't done it before, so I learned that the hard way because exactly that reason. Because you drop really? a box, you you know, like I'm just doing messing about in the corner, thinking exactly. But you're very right. Like that's so underthought of. That's just like basic branding hmm. that people don't think about, um, and that's very clever. I love that. And the other thing is to try, if you've got somebody design your logo, fantastic. If you've done it yourself, always try and download it in what they call a PNG format. So a PNG format is with a transparent background, like I showed in the top corner there. PNG so is, is yeah, so PNG as well on Canva. So that also allows, as someone using StreamYard all the time, that's how I create these things that go on mm -hmm. screen. You know, when they're like my Ash Borland you create any of your overlays on Canva through PNG. PNG is took me ages to figure that out, but they do make a big difference. So you can have all these different things. So I wish so that there PNG was someone out there like you teaching me at the time. I was trying to Google it and no idea what it was <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so a JPEG for anybody listening, the JPEG will have a solid background color. So that could be white or black as a PNG has a transparent background. So if you're having somebody design your logo, make sure they give you all the different types of formats. Yeah. And another quick tip, whenever you're designing for a poster, make sure you have um, either an SVG file, something that doesn't distort when you increase the size of it. Because what you find is you'll design something that looks fantastic on screen, send it to the printers, they blow it up to a football ballard sign size, and yeah. you've got your blurry logo. So it's to do with always, vector, isn't it? Is that what it is? Yeah, so yeah. You have to have a vector format um for yeah. your for your logo or any of your images. So if you save it as a PDF, it shouldn't stretch when you it shouldn't pixelate when you um increase the size of it. That's going off topic a bit. But no, it's no it's, sure good, get... it's interesting because I didn't know about that stuff for a long time until I mm. worked with an animator and I yeah. sent him a PMG and he was like, No, I need a vector image. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, it's exactly so... the same for mortgage brokers when you ask for bank statements and they send you a screenshot that's tiny and you blow it up <laughs> and it and you can't read it. That's essentially what's happening. That's putting it into more into your broker's terms as you guys Love have. it. Number four, this will save you so much time on Canva. If you're not a designer, go to the top left on Canva and go to templates. Now you can scroll through and what they'll do is they'll pick out a few templates. So we're talking now in the autumn, there'll be templates for autumn stuff. Okay. You can also search in there, mortgage broker, real estate, you could search banks, you could search money and it will come up with templates. That's the easy way. What I would do is recommend thinking outside of the box a bit. So type in there, 
bakery and you'll have posts, you'll have templates that will come up that a lot of all the more other mortgage brokers probably aren't using. So you take a bakery one and it might spark an idea. That it could be a, you know what I mean? A lovely photo, some cakes, and it could be like kind of have your cake and eat it with Smith's mortgages. It sparks an idea, but the template is there ready for you. You can then just go in, change the fonts, change the colors and put your logo on there. That's a okay. wicked idea. I've never heard of that before. That's so clever. Really? Yeah, that's really good because that, that is the issue I find with Canva is that the amount of people who use the templated and they're using the same ones over and over mm -hmm. again. But to go into a completely different industry or sector and then change those to be more in line with your brand, your, brand, your colors, but they're from a different template kind of source pool that's super good. And knowing your tricks now, this is how he does it. <laughs> this is, well, I'm Amazing. giving away a lot on here. But good. because what, what you see what you do is these, these mortgage broker and estate agent templates on, um, on Canva, they're normally quite harsh. So they're normally yeah. like big photo of an American house, mortgages, get in touch. Not every brand is like that. We have some clients where it's all about, um, it's a one-to-one. -one. There's one person in the business. It's, it's, it's very personal. It's maybe a bit softer, a bit more feminine in terms of the branding. Well, that doesn't fit it. So why not search spa? And that would fit the brand. So for example, um, not a client that we work with, but the mortgage mom. Yes. So they're a big brand. You wouldn't necessarily pick their color palette to fit with the mortgage broker, but it works so well because so of the people in the business. They're exactly. so recognizable. I say that was just like I've I've regularly messaged Sarah and said, I can't get away from your branding everywhere I look. It's instantly like it's the it's actually it's the Sainsbury's handbag. It's the same Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's handbag. Right? The Sainsbury's shopping bag again. It is that actually. I I instantly go pastel pink, certain writing, mortgage mum. Like it's instantly who it is. I know who it is. And so um that's really clever, actually. I've never, I, it is like a really say, and it's nothing. They they post nothing that is mortgage. It's more mortgage related, but it doesn't look like a traditional mortgage post. You're very right. Exactly. And that's what we try and do with all of our clients. We will try and make their posts. When somebody's scrolling, the reaction I want is when they're scrolling, they go, why is a mortgage broker uploading a photo of a cake? It gets my interest. Instead yeah. of Smith's mortgages uploading another photo of a house or, you know, the horrible image of AstroTurf with a, plus, a, a wooden house on it and a set of keys next to it. It's yeah. like it's been done a million times. People aren't going to react to that. Going back <laughs> to the colours, you look at people like Rebus, Pink, 313 Financial, Purple, RMA, Navy and the Navy and the Turquoise colour. Yeah. People know it. So um, take the template from the top left and you can just search any word. You could search clinical. You could search sterile. You could search cl um, like relax. Any word you can think of, it will create it will show you loads of templates another quick tip is if you press the three um dots in the top right of that template you can view templates that that company has done so say if um jones's templates created it if you press jones's templates in there you can actually see all of the templates that that company has created and they're going oh, wow. to be similar that will save you lots of time Massive time save in terms of templates, okay? Nice one. My last tip is then to set up your own templates. So one of the biggest reasons that people come to us is time because they haven't got the time to think of the ideas, but more so they haven't got the time to sit there and design social media posts. So if you want to save some time, my recommendation would be set up a customer review template where you've got your branding on there, you've got your colors, and if you go to my YouTube channel, there's a free five-minute video of how to create one of these customer reviews, okay? Create one of those. So if you ever get a review, you can just jump in there, put it in, and download it. Two-minute job, okay? Do templates for good news stories. Now, that could be good news story, and then that's all the same. You've got the text, you've got your colors, you've got your logo. And then beneath, you can just put what was the good news story. Love it. Set up templates like that where your colors and your fonts are all in place so you can just jump in when you haven't got any of these crazy ideas that you want to put out there. You can jump in and go, good news story, secure, secure the mortgage for somebody with adverse credit. Boom, that's your visual. And then you go and then write out the post. 
Customer, I'm sorry, templates on Canva will save you so much time. So just to recap, number one, you can create anything in Canva, not just social media posts, so flyers, magazines, anything like that. Number two, make sure you use consistent colors. Always think about the Sainsbury's carrier bag. First three months going hard on your colors. Make sure everybody sees it, and then you can start watering it down. Number three, get a couple of different colors for your logo. So one black, one white, one dark, one light, so that you can use them on different images or different colors on your on your posts. Number four, use templates in the top left-hand corner of Canva. There's loads in there and try and go outside of your industry. And number five, set up templates that can save you lots of time. So templates for your business opposed to the Canva templates. Love it, mate. It's super powerful. If people want to go and connect with you, where's the best place for them to go? Instagram. I'm big on Instagram at the minute. LinkedIn, I'm all over LinkedIn or Facebook. Awesome. That's social for brokers. Trust me, I would recommend people go and follow you for just for the stuff you do because you do a ton of great tips on mm -hmm. Canva stuff. Like I, I, learned, I actually, I was chatting to a client of mine who knows you very well and saying like, I learn loads of stuff about Canva from you on your videos. They're super mm -hmm. valuable. So I'd highly recommend people put you in the favorites. So that's definitely a thing to do. Mate, definitely. we'll definitely get you back on the show, um, but I'm going to run the outro out now, but thank you so much for coming on. That was super valuable and super useful. Thanks for having me, Matt. Appreciate it. You've been listening to the Mortgage Marketing Podcast with Ash Borland. If you've enjoyed the show, then be sure to leave a review and share it with a friend right now.